Over the years, I've been working as a traveling nurse, and there was nothing I disliked about my job. Since I have always needed security and comfort, but never had it from my family, I wanted to give it to others. I decided to become a nurse as my interest in the field increased rapidly. I grew accustomed to being surrounded by children or patients, and I loved to brighten their days and relieve their suffering. I felt alive when I was making jokes, gossiping, and taking care of my patients. Nothing was more enjoyable than seeing my patients' cheeks light up when I entered the room or listening to them exclaim with delight when they told me about seemingly little events. I never showed them pity, because that would be the most oppressive thing I could do. Instead, I showed them kindness and warmth and gave them a shoulder to rely on. Due to the opportunity to travel, which I have always loved, I preferred to work in various locations and at various times. Since I was so happy, I naively believed that nothing could possibly go wrong, but I never imagined that this would happen. I was proven wrong when I was working in Louisville, Kentucky. The duty was becoming difficult as there were many patients and not enough staff, so I was putting in extra hours. I didn't mind it, I was just really tired. I was about to leave for a pleasant evening out with my friends after finishing my duties that day when my neighbor called suddenly. I scowled as I felt uneasy and had a bad feeling about the call. He notified me that my house had experienced a recent break-in while I was on the road. At that point, my life took a turn for the worse and went downhill. At first, I was astonished and couldn't believe it, so I hired his daughter to occasionally watch after my home while I was out of town. Now, I was shakily standing on the sidewalk when a honk startled me out of my train of thoughts. I began to panic and got angry, because this time, I received news that I was not ready to hear. Yeah, the whole damn house had burned to the ground and I had lost everything. The home I had established on my own, where I experienced all of my happiness and mental breakdowns, was no longer there. There alongside my pals, I had a lot of memorable experiences. Almost all of my belongings, including the important stuff, were taken from me. I was unable to stop my cozy, secure place from disappearing. I contacted my friends at first thought, as I could not bear such devastating news alone. Luckily, I had kept some of my belongings over at my grandmother's old house, and I was glad I still had those with me. Even though she had been gone for over a decade, we never got rid of the old place. For me, it had a lot of childhood memories, but of course my family had other thoughts, as the house was beneficial to them. My family was not close to me, as we all grew up cold to each other. Working parents and distant siblings were all I had. Every spring and summer, my family rented out the house since it was an absolutely stunning view. Everyone cherished the opportunity to reside in such a tranquil setting. A very beautiful house with four bedrooms and a sizable garden with a pool. The best part of it, in my opinion, was looking over the lake. We were offered almost a million dollars for the place, but we chose to keep it in the family. While vacationing at the lake house, the majority of us would have a few days to ourselves, but it was not always the case, because occasionally other members of the family would just bug us to get the chance. When times were bad, I always went there to avoid reality so I had a lot of beautiful memories there. My friend suggested I stay at my grandmother's house, but I was hesitant at first because of my family. I knew they wouldn't allow me to stay there for very long, but I could try to persuade them to let me stay at least for a while. Who knows? Maybe they'll feel sorry for me. While I was disappointed about the loss of my house, 
I was relieved that I could stay in such a cozy, familiar place until I could get things sorted out. After my insurance money was paid in full, I moved into the house. I was quite grateful that I could stay there for up to three months since it was the off-season. At least, I was fortunate because nobody else was already there. Moreover, I had to buy everything again because, frankly, I had nothing to move. My friends Craig and Pete helped me with most of the clothes. I had to purchase a lot more than I thought. I had to purchase a lot more than I thought, which drained me. I thought the process would end soon, but who was I kidding? Everything was taking a really long time, so I had to take a few days off work to finish. Maybe it was for the best, because the days were so stressing, I just needed a break. I also had to undergo a lot of financial issues because of the fire. God alone knew how much I wish I had just managed to save my home somehow. I wasn't inspecting much, but getting all my important papers, like my social security card, my birth certificate, all the other things that I needed to fill out for my insurance. We intended to return home once my buddies purchased some food and I obtained all my paperwork. We were all tired as hell and there was still some work left to do. We decided to do it all the next day as we badly needed some rest. As we reached the house and were done with our food, Craig walked out to the porch taking in the lake view. I was standing there looking at the beautiful lake as I had always done when I was going through a hard time. I considered the lake to be my friend as it had always embraced me. As I was lost in my thoughts, Craig said in a playful tone, Damn, man, you're lucky to be living here scot-free. <laughs> Free? <laughs> I internally rolled my eyes as he thought I would really get that opportunity. I looked over at him as I started pulling canned goods from the bag. What? He chuckled as I knew I definitely had a dumb expression on my face. Listen up. Nothing is free. And definitely not with my family watching over me like a damn hawk. It took a lot of convincing to let me move in here for the time being. Family was supposed to be your safe zone, but most of my family was not too happy about me staying there for that long. I knew them, of course, and I didn't expect anything from them either, as they were a bunch of money-hungry dogs who never thought about anything other than money. I knew they would not allow me to live freely, so I was ready to pay rent in my own family home. It was very extraordinary, I thought, because my family just never gave me the chance to hate them even a little less. That was definitely not what my grandmother had wanted for us. She wanted us to be more understanding and be willing to pull for each other, but everything was upside down. Instead of being the ones to lend me a shoulder during my hard times, they were adding more of a burden. I was glad I had my friends, I thought, as Craig patted me on the shoulder, because I definitely needed them. Come on, give us a damn house tour. We deserve it, he said dramatically with a hand on his heart. I laughed, knowing he was trying to cheer me up, and I was glad to have him here. I finished giving them the house tour and then went to take a long bath. Craig wandered around in the main master bedroom, checking out our family pictures and all the old vintage artwork on the walls. I knew I would find him there later, as he was fond of paintings. I walked in on him as he was checking out a hand-painted picture of a little boy. I smiled looking at the picture as it had a special meaning to me. I see you found my grandma's favorite painting of me she did when I was 13, I said, the feeling of nostalgia washing over. Really? Wow. He was surprised. My grandmother did a lot of painting for us when I was a kid. And then she just stopped. I don't really know why. I was always curious, but she never told us. I always just made the excuse that she was getting old and painting became hard for her. I was glad to have that painting though, as it would always remind me of the beautiful moments I spent with her. Pete walked into the room with a can of beer in his hand and smiled mindlessly. He almost crashed into me as I barely saved myself from falling and shouted, Hey man, watch where you're going! 
Pete missed a step and fell backward, almost falling on top of a mirror. A loud thud came as he groaned at the sudden event, and I had to stop myself from laughing. Craig pulled him up from the floor as his jacket zipper snagged on a sheet that covered the mirror. Careful, man, I said. Oops, sorry. What is that? Pete said as he lifted the mirror from the floor and laid it on the dresser. He kept staring at it until Craig snatched it from him to look at it with his own curiosity. Damn, how old is this mirror and how far does it go back to? I pulled them away from the mirror as I panicked and then sighed when I saw that it was not broken. Be careful, you hardheads. This mirror goes back in my family since 1897, I said. 1897? Damn. And so old, yet so beautiful, Pete said, and started drinking his beer. Don't break anything, or you know my family, I said, as they both surrendered and held their hands up, laughing. Just then, an older man walked into the house and yelled, Hey, Rick, where are you? My eyes widened as I recognized the voice and prepared myself for what was coming. I ran into the room and saw my Uncle Frank spitting tobacco in his tall cup. Before I could say anything, he looked at me with a hard glare and said, I know you're going through a hard time and all, but I need you to respect the time you're living here and try not to break anything or I will break your head. I inhaled deeply and repeatedly heard him yelling at me. At last, I apologized since I had no other option. After getting grilled by my uncle, time had gotten away from us. It was already past 7 p.m., and my friends would have to travel a bit to get back from my place as it was a little far from the city. Given that we were surrounded by forests that would soon be getting dark, I offered to let them stay the night. Besides, I wouldn't mind some company since there was no house within miles, and I definitely needed some time getting used to having no other people nearby. I started to hang up the mirror which Greg almost broke in the hallway near the bathroom. I could not let anything break in this house. I turned the mirror around to examine the back and saw some scratching in the wood. I was looking at it as Pete pulled it out of my hand. Hold on. That's no scratches. It says... Say my name, he said. There was thick tape, but only over the name. We found that odd. Why would there be tape covering the name? And why had I never noticed it? Whose name was written there? A lot of questions were in my head, but I was too burned out to think about them. Pete carried the mirror back into the kitchen and sat at the table. I followed him and said, Pete, I swear if you... He stopped me mid-sentence and said, Don't worry, I won't break it. I'm just going to try to find out why it's covered in tape. Craig followed us into the kitchen. He was yawning, and I was also stopping my eyes from falling shut. Hey, it's late and we got a lot to do in the morning, so let's pack it in and get our rest, Craig said, rubbing his eyes. You guys go get some rest. I'm just going to check into this thing. I'm not even that sleepy anyway, Pete said as he was immersed in the mirror. Be careful with it, I said as Craig and I left. He decided to carry on decoding his personal mystery as we headed to bed. He was always the curious one, so I didn't mind. As darkness fell, all the wildlife sang throughout the night, and we had no problem getting to sleep. We were too tired and immediately fell into a deep slumber. As the night wore on, I was awoken by lights shining through my bedroom door. I tried to ignore them, but it was getting brighter and brighter. I squinted my eyes, confused, and as I sat up I heard people talking in the other room. There was no one here except us three. So why in the hell were they awake, I thought, and decided to give them some peace of mind for ruining my sleep. I walked by Pete's room and saw the bed was still made up, so I walked into the kitchen I thought maybe they were still on that mirror. 
but I saw the mirror facing down and the tape removed from the back of the plate. My heartbeat increased, and I don't know why, but I felt as if something big was going to happen. I did not like what I was feeling, so I ran to Greg's room and saw that he was still sleeping peacefully. So then who was talking, and with whom? My mind was full of negative thoughts as I shook Greg hard to wake him up. Pete's gone, and he's nowhere in the house, I said, panicking. Hey, Rick, what the hell? I was having a good fantasy when you butted in, he said it as a matter of fact. I immediately ran outside, leaving a confused Greg behind. I searched all over the property, but Pete was nowhere. I was feeling scared as I felt something in the corner of my eye staring at me. As I turned my head, I sighed in relief, as it was just Pete standing in the wood line. However, he was not looking himself, or moving at all. He was just looking at me with a blank expression and lost eyes. I called his name several times. I frowned as I wondered why he wasn't replying. Suddenly a light flashed in front of me, and I felt as if something hard had struck me. I felt my consciousness leaving me, and the dark sky full of stars was the last thing I saw as I fell back. After what felt like an eternity, I woke up, tied up, lying on the floor. My head was hurting badly as I blinked my eyes and struggled to sit. I tried to make my dazed mind work to figure out where I was when I noticed that my socks and shoes were off as everything came back to me. I looked ahead and saw Pete staring at me. He walked over and sat down in front of me. I winced as his pointy dark nails dug into my flesh, leaving a trail of red blood. Suddenly, his eyes changed into pitch black demonic eyes, and I felt the air leaving my body. He pulled me up with unbelievable strength. It was becoming hard for me to breathe, as he said. Your friend is gone now, and I'm the new tenant in this house. Leave me alone, you crazy bastard! I in a flash, he threw me ten feet across the room as if I was nothing but a toy. I felt my senses shutting off as I watched his body start to deteriorate as if it were decomposing rapidly. It all felt like a nightmare. I felt pained and my eyes were full of tears, threatening to fall. I struggled to my feet as my body was hurting so much. I tried to limp over to the window and yell for help, as I could do nothing else. I saw Craig wander into the room and walk over to the thing that used to be Pete. I started shaking as I desperately yelled, Get away from him! He's not Pete! Rick, where are you? Craig panicked. Pete was standing there, smirking as Craig looked towards me. He noticed me at the window, tied up, and immediately ran towards me. What's happening here? But before he could reach me, the thing attacked him. In a second, Craig was in front of it, a hand wrapped around his throat, pressing hard enough to rip it out of him. He tried to free himself, but the thing was too strong. I stood there, helplessly, as my whole body was numb with pain. I could see Craig's veins popping out as he was struggling and choking as that thing mercilessly ripped into his gut. My mouth opened as a loud, piercing scream left my lips. I forced myself to finally run from the room, not caring about my state. However, I stumbled and fell to the floor full of broken glass. My body could not move and all I could think about was how I lost my two friends together in one night. Would it have happened if I had taken that damn mirror from Pete? No. No. No! I felt myself going feral as I could not save them. The thing I once called my friend walked into the room, wearing Craig's face. I tried to crawl away as my hands were bleeding from the shards of glass. He appeared in front of me, 
and picked me up from the glass-covered floor. He forced me to stare directly into my friend's ripped face as my vision became blurry from the tears that fell from my eyes. He then held up the back of the mirror as his other hand gripping my hair harshly thrust my face towards it, forcing me to read it. Say my name five times or die like your friends. He spoke in a powerful and dangerous voice, but my eyes hardened as I glared at him and yelled, You killed my friends. Read your own damn name!